Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. What are we doing today? Well, I'm here back to talk about some more Fago, as they've announced that the Return to Halloween campaign is starting, and they've started this at the same time as the interlude one is going on, which was, I think, I actually should double check, I can see it right here. Halloween comeback started October 1st. This happened, this went until October, wow, September 20, did it really last that long? That, that's an insane time less, September 29th until October 31st, that's an entire month. Anyway, back to it. Uh, so yeah, they were always going to plan to announce this, but they announced it a little bit sooner than I expected. They also did announce this Faith Samurai stuff, which is going to be coming up pretty soon. Um, we'll see what that entails for us, but it looks like it's going on at the same time as JP. I don't know what to expect from this, but we'll see. But we're going to be focusing on Halloween, and specifically I'm going to be taking a look at the free-to-play Liz's, just in case you're curious about them. Um, in terms of what you're going to be doing in this event, it's pretty simple. You're going through the three stories of the previous Halloween. Um, the story that got us yes, the first Halloween Liz, Brave Liz, and then Mecha Liz. Um, I'm not sure if you actually get both of them here now that I think about it. Um, uh, let me look. I can look right here. Go all the way to the main quest. Go down here. So you can only choose one. Okay, so you it's still... The choice is still only one. <laughs> Interesting. Weird also, but okay. It's fine, they're basically the exact same unit. Um, it's just that one is silver and one isn't, and there are some personality differences. And the CEs are different in terms of art and what they have in the background, funny enough. But they'll also be getting strength things along with it. Along with that, there will also be a chance of super and great suck. Which you can see here for basically anyone that was ever involved in a Halloween type event. Rank up quests for these servants right here. Siegfried, Caesar... Uh, Tristan, Robin Hood, uh, Liz, Ozzy, Tamamo, Naido, Asaka Bihime, Carmilla, Wu, Yen, Hassan, Serenity, um, Madahari, uh, Raiko, Vlad, Ibaraki, Tamamo Cat, and Kiyohime. And there'll be some two times friend point summons as well. And yeah, that's what it's currently looking like. There is a banner related to it, but I'm not going to be going over this banner just yet. Because as you can see from this banner, if this banner stays the way it is, you're good to not summon on it. The best thing on this banner is the Petite Devil CE from Halloween 1. <laughs> Halloween Petite Devil, I think, is probably the best one on here. Um, oh, and the art for Trick or Treatment, actually. That's actually very good as well. Do they have... Oh, they have Dangerous Beasts as well. Never mind. Okay, so a lot of this, a lot of great Halloween CE art. So if you love Halloween CE art, this is a must-summon banner to try and attempt to get those. But if, in, if you're talking in terms of actual unit quality, Cleopatra and Vlad, as much as I like Cleopatra. Funny enough, Vlad is actually very good. Um, Cleopatra needs a little bit more working, and Hime is not, not my type of unit, so I can't really speak about how good she is, actually. Anyway, let's go on to the Liz's. Uh, do 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 where are the three Liz's? I know you're here. There we are. You'll find them down here. Uh, even though this is a Liz event, you won't be getting this one. But at this point, everyone should have a copy of Lancer Liz. She comes with a copy of your Xbox. Let's go over the first one. Elizabeth Baffery Halloween. Uh, she is a caster. She is a <laughs> as close to a year one servant as it can be. Uh, Hollow Ellie, I have never seen anyone call her that at all. That, but that's a fun. I always call her. Actually, I don't know what I call this Liz. Caster Liz? Halloween Liz? It is the most Halloween y of all the Liz's, I'll say. Uh, she has one quick, three arts, one buster. Her first skill, which is, I believe, this is the one that gets buffed by the. Actually, there's two of them here. This might be actually the one, but either way, I'll cover them. First skill, which is an upgrade from Innocent Monster into Halloween Star EX, is gain crit stars every turn. For three turns, recover own HP, removes one latest buff from all enemies. If successfully removing the buff, 500% chance to inflict Happy Halloween debuff for three turns to them. Happy Halloween reduces critical attack chance by 10%. Charges on MP gauge by 20% based on the number of enemies with Happy Halloween debuff. The amount of MP charged by multiples by the number of enemies by Happy Halloween debuff. The star regen is 20 at level 10 and the heal is 3000 and there's a cooldown of 5. If you're wondering what Innocent Monster EX was, it was 
gain crit stars. <laughs> 12 crit stars and a heal for 2,000 on the cooldown of 5. Yeah, like I said, she's a very early, very early unit. Second skill, which is uh, another good example of how early this unit is, <laughs> increase own buster performance for a single turn. Inflict burn with 300 damage for 10 turns to all enemies. One buster card, <laughs> a singular buster card, and I believe she has a buster NP. But <laughs> they, this is maybe... Not not a very good skill. Boy, it is a 45% up for a single turn, though. Third skill, which is the Halloween Encore A, um, which upgrades so after her first strengthening. Uh, grant self gut status for one time, five turns. Charges on MP gauge. Gain eight crit stars. Inflicts spread of fire status for five turns to all enemies. Increases burn damage on them. Uh, 2500 HP, 30% NP, burnt damage rate is uh, 100%, and is a cooldown of 7, because that's a real shame, because this is charged to our MP gauge. And if you're wondering what this was beforehand, a guts for 5 turns and 8 crit stars, and that's basically it. Same amount of HP and everything. Cooldown was also exactly the same. Her passive skills are Territory Creation B and Item Construction A. Her third append skill is an Anti-Lancer Attack Damage Aptitude. And her Noble Phantasm is a Ranky Minus Bathory Halloween Elizabeth Fresh Blood Special Demoness. It is Rank E Minus, like I said beforehand. Hits five times, Buster AoE, deals damage that ignores defensive buffs to all enemies. Uh, inflicts Curse for three turns on them. The damage is going to be 500% because she's a free-to-play unit and you should get her to MP5, no problem. Uh, and the curse damage up is um, at charge level one is 500, and if you get her all the way to the final charge, it's 2500. And yeah, that's the first Halloween Liz. Um, they're working on fixing the rest of her kit. I think eventually, unfortunately, the thing that's always going to hold her back is the fact that she's a Buster unit with a sync with two Buster cards. Again, early for Go was weird. It was a very weird game. It was a very different kind of game. Um, a lot of, like, and I think they've understood that, that's why, like, this skill, compare this one to this one, it's just a night and day difference. This makes her at least more of a fun unit, which I think is what they probably want most out of the Liz's, is that they don't technically want them to be the, the greatest unit in the world, but if you can have a fun unit that everyone can enjoy and kind of fits with the theming of actual Hop of Halloween, having a happy Halloween, I think that fits just as well for me. Because she is a free-to-play caster, and to be fair, um, when it comes to free-to-play casters, not a lot of uses for an AoE one. I like having an AoE caster, but I've never really... And funny enough, I think in early days of Fago, I did use her for um, any nodes that needed a caster AoE unit, but I very quickly stopped using her because she just was quickly outranked by so many other berserkers and also other casters of her type as well. But at least they are trying, and, you know, I think eventually, with a couple more buffs, if they buff this second skill to something that isn't totally bo bogus, and they kind of focus in on more of, like, it's really weird that she is so burn-focused, and her NP gives curse damage and not, and not burn, so... They could fix that. But either way, free unit Halloween. She, in terms of thematicness, this is a fantastic thematic unit. Uh, fitting at the Halloween spirit and worth having, I feel, for that alone. And this is someone is, who's very biased towards ha Halloween. So let's move on to the next Liz. Brave Liz, please don't take down my channel. Brave Liz. Saber. Um... One with a dragon. This is a dragon. If you're wondering, he's like, why is Japan like this? This is a Dragon Quest reference, and the entire like, um, oh, it's a, I wonder if they're gonna keep it for the actual story event in here. But when you did the story back in the day, it was actually kind of structured like um, Ghost and Goblins, which is really funny because her outfit comes from Dragon Quest, but the actual event itself was focused on ghosts and goblins like it even did the thing where you had to do it all over again because you missed a specific item and they sent you all the way to the to the front so i'm wondering why they either way it was a really cool event i really liked it i think it actually might be one of my favorite story it might it actually be just because of how cool the references were for it i think so i really like it either way let's move on uh yes one quick two arts two buster uh, first skill, Heroine's Great, Principal EX, grants self-invincibility for one turn, increases on MP generation rate for one turn. The MP rate is 50%, um, on a cooldown is 6. 
second skill. Mana Burst, again, these are really old units. Increases own buster performance for a single turn and then increases own defense by 20% for one turn. 40% buster, two buster cards, technically power creeping the old Liz already. Third skill, which this is the one that had this is the one they had to buff, because this is notorious as to why this Liz was so bad for so long. Uh, Legend of the Crimson Heroine of the movie EX can only be used when the MP gauge is 50% or higher. Reduces own MP gauge by 50%. It's a demerit. Grants one random effect from these effects. Only one can be activated. Increase own buster performance for three turns. Wait 20%. Increases party invincibility for one turn. Wait 20%. It recovers party's HP. Wait 20%. Increases party's attack for one turn. Wait 20%. Gain crit stars. Wait 20%. The buster up is 50%, the heal is 300, uh, 300, 3000, the attack up is 50, the stars are 50, and the cooldown is of 6. And if you're wondering what it used to be, which is the Legend of the Crimson Heroine, it was this, but it was... It required 100% of your NP gauge <laughs> to do this. And then it granted one of these five, which was, I believe, yeah, these are still the same. So the main buff that they gave to this is that they limited how much it costs you to actually do this. Um, passive skills are Magic Resistance A, Territory Creation C, and then Double Class. And her third skill, the reason there's a reason for this. It's it's in story. Um, you'll read it. I guess I don't, I don't I won't spoil it, but there's a reason she has that. Uh, Anti-Avenger attack damage aptitude increases on attack for Avenger enemies. And then the, the Noble Phantasm, which is rank B, but then it gets upgraded to rank V. Um, or I guess 5? Let's go with V. The Bathory Braze Elizabeth, the Tornado Demon's Daughter of Fresh Blood. It's an anti-army rank V Noble Phantasm. 7 hits, Buster. Deals damage that ignores his defensive buffs to one enemy. Inflicts f spread of fire status for uh, for 5 turns to them. Increases burn damage on them by 200%. Uh, and then inflicts burn damage on them for 5 turns is the overcharge effect. At MP level 1, this deals uh, 12,000 damage. And at overcharge level one, it is 500 burn damage plus, and then all in the, the the burn damage is 500, and then if you get it all the way to the final overcharge, it's 2500. And that is uh, Brave Liz. Um, Brave Liz is also not super good for a lot of reasons. She's another unit similar to the other Halloween Liz, where I think it's probably more fun to actually use her than to actually like take her on as a serious event thing. The reason is is that if you're actually someone who like cares super deeply about like, oh man, all my units have to do exactly what they need to do every single time, this ability is gonna drive you nuts based off of which one of these you're giving up for. There's nothing worse than being like, I need invincibility for the entire party. Let me just do a quick gamba and see if I can hit the Grant Party Invincibility for a single turn. And if you fail that, well maybe I'll heal them. Oh wait, they were at full HP, but at least we'll increase their attack or something. Um, very silly unit, not one that you want to take, I guess, the most serious about it, and I think that kind of shows in it. I think this actual Noble Phantasm is pretty interesting. Um, uh, what was it beforehand? I, I want to say this did nothing. Yeah, it didn't do anything. It just ignores defensive buffs. The ability to ignore defensive buffs is pretty nice, and if you're actually fiending for a single target saber, there are worse single target sabers than Brave Liz. Um, I think, anyway. I would have to actually double check on that. <laughs> that I, are there worse to single target? Um, oh, no, I was going to say, there are worse buster saber units. Because I think Gillis is technically a buster uh, saber. Um... Hmm, yeah, and he, he would probably be pretty bad. But the idea of the spreading fire, so if you actually were in a challenge quest that was like, hey, they actually get damaged a lot by fire, or by, um, maybe they have crazy high defense or something like that, she would actually kind of come in handy for that and be a fun unit to kind of use for that kind of purposes. But other than that, this is another unit where it's kind of like big flavor uh, big flavor win in terms of Halloween. Um, I really do like a lot of the aesthetics around this Liz. But in terms of how good this Liz is, there's a reason she is a free-to-play unit. And she's also an early free-to-play unit. So you know what? If they ever buff these other two skills and make them much better... Um, I, I didn't even really talk about how bad I think that this first skill is. Which is... 
uh, a grand, an invincibility that's also tied to a single turn MP generation might actually be one of the worst skills out there. Even if the MP generation rate is 50%. No, even... It's 50%, but she only has like two arts cards. Anyway, this is a unit. This is again not another very good unit, but it is a Halloween Liz. So if you're into the spooky season, a fantastic Liz for your Liz collection. Next, the final two, which are basically the same, but I'll just go over one of them. It's Mecha Ellie Chan, and the other one is Mecha Ellie Chan Mark II, I believe. The Mecha Ellie Chan Mark II, that is correct. Uh, she is an alter ego. I think this is actually, of the ones of the featured, this is actually the good one. Uh, <laughs> one quick, one arts, three buster. We finally made it to a Halloween Liz that has a three buster kit. Let's go. Active skill, Innocent Kaiju EX grants critical stars every turn for three turns. Increases on defense for three turns. Uh, star regen is 10, the defense is 30%, and the cooldown is 5. The second skill is the Overlord Revised C+. Um, charges on MP gauge, deals 500 damage to self without killing. Um, gain crit stars, and the MP up is 20%, and the, the stars are 25 at level 10. With a 5 turn cooldown, and uh, before this it was just an MP gauge for 20%, and that's it. Her third skill is the final Ellie Chan C, 500% chance to remove own defensive buffs, and then increase own MP damage for a single turn, and then increase own critical damage for a single turn. The MP damage up is 60%, and the crit damage is 60%, and this is on a cooldown of 5. Uh, magic resistance B, item construction B. The third append skill is an uh, increased attack against Lancers. They really don't like the Lancer version. And then our Noble Phantasm is the Breast Zero Isabeth, the Soaring Metallic Demoness. It's boob missiles, basically. Uh, 8 hit, buster, uh, deals damage to a single enemy, removes their defensive buffs, and the damage is going to be 1000 because you are going to get her to MP5 because she is a free to play unit. Reduces their defense for 3 turns, at overcharge 1 is 20%, and at the final overcharge level it is 40%. And that's Mecha Ellie, and again, the main difference between them is besides their personality, is that they actually do have different um, Bond 10 CEs. Which you can see right here, you get the Guardian Gigantic versus um, the diagram. See, so you have a little diagram here that you use to kind of like, it's like a microphone. And then for the this version of Mecha Ellie, you get a giant Mecha Ellie as the CE. So, it actually is probably, and they also have, they share different bond levels and everything and probably use different um, coins now that I think about it. Why did they do it this way? I don't know, but it was nice that you were able to get both if you did a rerun, and it's kind of messed up that you can't get both <laughs> if you're this is your first time going through it. That kind of sucks, but it's not the biggest deal unless you're a huge fan of Ellie. And I actually really do like Mecha Ellie. I think she might actually be... Is she my favorite form of Ellie? Hmm. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. Outside of the one from Learning with Manga, the eggplant Liz, which we never got. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, this is the best one of them all. Obviously, there's a huge demerit in this third skill, removing her own defensive buffs. Um, so you would probably have to actually activate this first and then activate your own buffs here. Um, but being an alter ego means that it, this is not a class that has like a lot of dudes in it. Let me see if I can double check it. At least I remember this was true when she came out. There just wasn't a lot of alter egos that you can get that are specifically single target. So let's see, there's Melt, which is a five star. There is Setonia, who is a five star. There is, yeah, a lot of these are five stars, <laughs> except for this one, this is a three star. This is a four star. This is actually attainable. And also not limited outside of it being a... Are they actually... Okay, the Zufu is not limited, but the rest of these are either 5 stars or limited or story locked, and that makes them very hard to get. So in terms of if you just want to have an alter ego in case you just need to use an alter ego, she's there for you and she's going to be free and that's perfectly fine. And she's a perfectly okay unit. She's not going to be doing some crazy... Unfortunately, every single... This is true for every single one of the Liz. None of them really work very well with Vich, and I don't even think if you could go with Oberon, could you really go crew crate? You might be able to... Mm, I guess it kind of depends on your CE choices. Maybe if you start with a kaleidoscope and then kind of go from there. And figure... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, either way, you would have to figure out a way to make it work. <laughs> That's the basic of me trying to, like, do the math on here, and the answer is it's really going to depend on the person in your team comp at that point if you want to use them that badly. Um, but at least this Liz actually has a kind of cool thing going for her, being the fact that she is the, probably the most easily accessible until Zufu comes out, Alter Ego, who is single target, and because she is single target, that means she can fit perfectly into any fight which only requires you to use a single target unit and that will be perfectly fine is she the absolute greatest thing in the world no but she is an improvement over the other two at least and is actually could i've actually seen people use mecha ellie chan and be like okay i didn't have a lot of options she's a free mp5 single target you make do with what you got sometimes not everyone can actually have the full uh five star servant list <laughs> and go crazy with it sometimes you just gotta make do with what you got and yeah, those are all the Liz's, and the other free-to-play Liz is going to be coming later in the month, and we'll hopefully get the actual start time for that, um, and we'll see what it is. So yeah, that's going to be the free-to-play servants. Are these Liz's very good? At least one of them I think is pretty solid, and the other two are kind of like, eh. But I think in terms of Halloween spirit, I think every single one of them has it, and they're kind of worth having. I've kind of used mine off and off off and on over the years it really kind of depends on the mood and if i'm feeling just like using liz at this exact moment i actually think i remember using a lot of brave liz back in the day but again early for go was a very different time it was uh an interesting experience if i could say anything else you may do with what you had <laughs> you went an entire year without ever getting a five star <laughs> Unless you were paying for the GSSR every, like, six months or so. Sometimes you just went through long droughts, and you know what? You just didn't have a good single target saber. And you're like, Liz is free, and as long as I never use her third skill, she'll be perfectly fine and be able to shoot off an NP, I guess. You make do with what you have. But anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. I will make a follow-up if they change the summoning campaign at any capacity or when they actually officially announce it maybe i'll make a separate video talking about it um because i do think a lot of people do like vlad and he is actually a very good solid unit it's the other ones that are kind of a little iffy on on some of these but for the most part a lot of people just don't have a lot of sq not a lot of same courts to kind of go around so i don't blame anyone unless you're just like a super crazy vlad head and this is the banner you've actually been waiting for most people are just going to skip on it, but I'll talk about it when it gets officially announced to see if they add anyone else to it. I don't think they will, just because it is all Halloween servants. I guess they could add Tomomo. Tomomo was actually the first uh, SSR for Halloween. That's why she has a bonus rate up, but she isn't on here, funny enough. Um, yeah, it is really... <laughs> they have it for... This was the, uh, the, the, the second year. This was the third year. And Vlad is taking the place as Tomomo, who was supposed to be the first year. <laughs> Vlad did not release with the first year. It was Tomomo. But it also kind of feels like they just wanted to release Tomomo and have an excuse or whatever. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I've talked on long enough for just talking about free-to-play Liz's. Thank you very much if, uh, for watching if you made it this far. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Bye.